when a Linux user mentions the term KVM, they normally mean kernel virtual machine, which is a type of virtualization found on Linux computers. But that's not what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about something called Jet KVM. Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel, and this is Scott. Traditionally, keyboard video mouse, or KVMs, are switches that allow connecting to multiple computers. And this is one such hardware device. It's a rockable KVM, and the console would be meant to be connected to a display, a DVI monitor in this case, and then a mouse and a keyboard would be connected, and optionally also speakers and a microphone. That in turn could be connected to four separate PCs with pretty close proximity to where you're located and you would be able to use a keyboard shortcut or a front panel button to switch between the various computers on the single display keyboard and mouse. But that is not the KVM we seek. We also have what is referred to as the network KVM or KVM over IP which allows the user to make a console connection over a network so you don't have to have proximity to the machine whose console you are connecting with. So most KVM over IP devices are expensive and they can range up into the hundreds of dollars range and some are integrated solutions such as Intel's AMT, Dell's iDRAC which is their integrated Dell remote access controller, HP's ILO which is their integrated lights out, and Supermicro's IPMI, which is the Intelligent Platform Management Interface. So we need some home lab solutions, and there are some out there. TinyPilot is an open source IP KVM that you can implement on a Raspberry Pi. And you can actually buy one of those pre-assembled as a commercial product, and it's called the TinyPilot Voyager 2A, and it is $400, which in my way of thinking is pretty pricey. There's also another popular project by the name of Pi KVM, and it's also open source, and it sells for between $240 and $350, depending upon the support and model that you're looking for. And then there's also other KVM projects, which include projects like Bly KVM, PyCast KVM, GeekWorm KVM, and Nano KVM, which have been pretty popular lately. Jet KVM, funded on Kickstarter with 19,409 backers and $2.7 million, was raised out of their original $50,000 goal. And I received mine about three days ago on January the 9th and that cost me $88, including shipping. I funded it back in the July-August time frame, and I was crossing my fingers it would become a real product, and that I would actually uh, receive my reward for having funded, and I did. So this device is a game changer for the home lab, and I'm going to discuss why. So what exactly is a Jet KVM? Well, the Jet KVM has a Rockchip RV1106G3, which is an ARM Cortex A7 processor, which is only a single core 32-bit processor, and it only has 256 megabytes of DDR3 low-powered memory, but it does have integrated H.264 and H.265 hardware encoding. And there is 16 gigabytes of integrated EMMC storage, the majority of which is used for the Jet KVM software, but there's around four to five gigabytes of it that are reserved for a space in which you can put an ISO file in the event that you want to have an ISO file that you might load to the device directly on the Jet KVM. I typically would use my uh, Pixie booting option to something like iVentoy 
or netboot.xyz and load things that way since that four to five gigabytes is pretty limited storage on the Jet KVM. But it's a nice addition that they put it there. And so the Jet KVM also has a 1.69 inch IPS display with a resolution of 240 by 280 with a capacitive touchscreen. And there is a 100 megabit fast ethernet port and you might say 100 megabit. Well, yes, but the only thing that it has to do is display your uh, screen and that's more than enough to handle that. And it also has a USB-C port, which happens to only be USB 2.0. And so therefore it only runs at 480 megabits, but realize that all that needs to support is your keyboard and your mouse. And it also has a mini HDMI port for the video. And then it has an RJ11 extension port, which can be for optional remote controlled either ATX or DC power in the case of a mini PC. And I did not purchase the uh, optional connector for the RJ11 port because it was not going to be my use case to remotely control the power. And besides, I knew that I had wake on LAN capability for waking a remote machine that this might be connected to. So remote access is achieved via a web browser on the machine that you want to do the controlling from. And then the Jet KVM is running an Nginx web server and they primarily use WebRTC for their remote control capability. And it's faster than other IP KVMs and they advertise a 30 to 60 millisecond latency at their full resolution of 1080p at 60 frames per second. And really when it comes right down to it, I mean, it's fast. It really is fast. You're not gonna be doing any gaming on this thing, but you're also not going to be waiting for the screen to paint. So it, as I mentioned, it has the IPS display and touch screen. Basically what that looks like is here, and I've got mine connected to my old Dell computer that I just finished upgrading um, to my new Minis Forum machine. And so you're looking at the actual display. This is a local um, IP address that it obtained through the DHCP server on my LAN. And then below that, it is listing the MAC address of the Jet KVM device. And then at the bottom of the screen, it has uh, the fact that the USB is connected and also that the HDMI is connected. And so this is a really nice one glance status to see what the thing is actually doing. And then um, this is the device kind of flipped around backwards. Here's the uh, HDMI uh, mini plug here is this plug here for the video. Uh, Next to it, we have the 100 megabit fast ethernet. I just used a blue cable and that's connected back to my switch. It's not connected to the Dell. It's, it's designed to connect the device to the network so we can talk to the Jet KVM. And then in the lower left here, we have this USB-C and that's a USB-C because it was a smaller connector. It basically goes back to the Dell and plugs into one of the USB ports and its uh, purpose is to basically carry the keyboard and the mouse traffic. And then this port that I'm not using is an RJ11, and it's an extension port for mainly optional ATX power control as well as DC power control, but I did not uh, purchase that optional hardware and dongle that you can plug into this because that wasn't going to be something that I was doing. So if we look at this thing all plugged in, here we've got my um, USB-A connector up here, a typical mouse keyboard connector. So I only need one of them because the one cable, which is included, this cable is included, uh, carries the keyboard and the mouse traffic and it goes down to this USB-C port that you see right here. The other cable we have plugged in is right here is the video card. And so we have HDMI video. So that's a full-size HDMI on the Dell side. 
and then it's a mini HDMI on the Jet KVM side, and that cable is also included with the package. And then this blue cable here, which is my fast Ethernet cable, doesn't connect to the Dell. It's running off into the Netherlands and it's connected over to one of my Ethernet switches. And so right now the Dell's not physically connected to the network. I just thought that it was a better way to point out what this is actually doing. But the Dell has a 10 gigabit SFP plus card right here. And then the K of the word keyboard up here is on top of the integrated one gigabit ethernet port that the Dell has on its motherboard. Here's the web interface for Jet KVM, and I've assigned a local DNS address of Jet KVM to my Jet KVM. In this particular case, I have connected to my Dell XPS 8930 system that I just finished upgrading from to my new minis form, but I booted the machine up and I hit the key to enter the BIOS. And in this particular case, I'm accessing the BIOS of that machine remotely. And this is one of the advantages of using a network KVM or a KVM over IP. We've got options here where we can paste text that happens to be in your cut buffer. We have the ability to access virtual media. And as I mentioned in the slides, that gives you an option to upload an ISO that you may decide to boot from. We have a wake on LAN option here, and we also have a virtual keyboard option. And I suppose that's if you were working from a device where virtual keyboard or unscreen keyboard were more convenient. And then over here, we have the connection status. Um, if I click it, it will go ahead and tell me how the connection's been performing to the remote device. Since we're on the LAN, I don't see that that's going to make uh, a lot of difference in this particular case. If I click on connection stats again, it goes away. Up at the top, you can see that it says that the Jet KVM device is connected and that the USB is connected for my keyboard and my mouse. And then here I have my settings and the settings are actually pretty simple. So we have whether or not you want to check for updates for the Jet KVM and whether or not you want the development channel updates or not. Uh, and then you have your advanced settings. I have developer mode set to on, and that's so I can put an SSH key into this in the event that I want to SSH into it and look at the code on the actual Jet KVM. With the SSH key set for remote access in the event that I were interested in connecting to the device with SSH, I could do an SSH to root at Jet KVM. And then I get a prompt over there. I could CD over to the root and do an LS and it looks like a regular Linux operating system. So I could munge around to look at things in here. I suppose the media folder might have some mounted devices, which it does not. So um, you might be able to mount devices like you would through any other operating system, make them accessible or modify the source code. So I thought that was uh, pretty neat option that they provided. Short of that, if we go down here, there really isn't anything else at the bottom of the screen. Overall, they've got this troubleshooting mode. And the only other thing we have here is the ability to go full screen. So if we go full screen, we now have my remote system on full screen. So the advantage to this, of course, is I can go through all the various BIOS options and I could say um, exit the BIOS and discard changes. I didn't make any changes. And I'll go ahead and say yes, and it will begin to reboot, I suppose. Or maybe not. Let me see. Yeah, save changes and reset. So I do that. It clears off the screen and it's going to begin booting remotely. And now that the machine has booted up remotely, I'll go ahead and click here and sign on to my user account. And we can see that it will log in. And 
access things. So if we go to scottabyte.com, you'll notice that the graphics are actually pretty quick. I know it doesn't look completely like it would if we we're on a normal desktop. And part of that reason is because it has a little bit different color depth, but it is pretty responsive. If I go ahead and tell it to restore everything, um, you can see that it's bringing up all of my screens that I normally have here and we're able to access everything as expected. Once you disconnect or shut down the remote machine, you'll get a screen that tells you that a connection issue was detected and it will also tell you that the JET KVM device is connecting and the USB is currently disconnected, meaning basically that you've disconnected from your JET KVM session. Anyway, I really think that this is a really valuable device, especially in the instance where you might want to connect to the console of a machine because either you want to do something in the BIOS or you want to load an operating system from scratch and you might not be exactly where the computer is or you don't want to have to pull out a monitor, a keyboard, and a mouse to connect to it. So in summary, Jet KVM does what it says for a fraction of the price for other similar solutions. And the software is completely open source and it is included on GitHub. The RG11 extension port can optionally be used for ATX power control and DC power control in the case of mini PCs. And it also has a serial device connection in case you wanted to debug the software on the Jet KVM device. The device is powered from the USB-C port, but in the case of some computers, which might not have USB-C power or USB power, it has an included Y cable that can provide external power from a phone charger that you provide. And the Linux OS is a microkernel called BuildRoot, and the application is written in the Go language. The price point coupled with performance makes this an obvious choice for home lab users. Anyway, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like to the channel and don't forget to hit your notification bell and we'll see you next time.